On the Malawi 110, one of the jobs was to have a look at the power steering box because, strangely enough, it was leaking. When I observed it when I was out of the car running, it was leaking out of the input shaft. You know when it comes down from your um, steering, steering column? So I took it off. Everything. And it's here. Now I'm not sure if you can see everything, but there's the, there's the pump, uh, there's the steering box, reservoir, pump. And that's basically all there is to it. I wish I should, maybe I should try and get back a bit further. How's that? Is that any better? Yeah, I see. So your pump only creates flow, right? So the, the power, it receives fluid from the reservoir here into the pump into your power steering box and the return is along this line. That's kind of straightforward isn't it? Let's come back again. It is a self-contained unit but if you note what's happened here this is why I'm changing it. It's got a braised line but also look at the state of the uh, can you see there that the the flex is starting to go. I know it's only protective cover, I know it's more solid inside also, we've got a, a clamp around here that's sort of on its last legs. Wait a minute, I'll zoom out a bit. You can't see, can you? Uh, I've got a clamp here that's been sort of roughed up a bit. These are starting to crack. Um, oh, and... Uh, wait a minute. Here. I don't know if you can see down here. Wait a minute. Uh, it's a very difficult one to film because it's all over the place. There, can you see this hose? It's knackered. So what I thought for, to do today is, I've already bought new hoses, so that's not a problem. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll look at this power steering box, because it's a right-hand drive, and I haven't got an exchange one, so, but I'm restricted by budget now on this. So I thought I'd do something a little bit different instead of taking it all to bits and putting it back together again. Because it did actually operate quite well, can we replace the seals on the shafts? I don't know, I usually take them all to bits, but it'd be quicker to change the seals. Now I've got a testing machine over here, so I can test it to see if it leaks. You haven't, but let's see because, well, let me get this bloody thing, these pipes out of the way. As you can see, it's already started spewing out. Um, this is why I cleaned my bench up, you see, because I knew something was like this would happen. <clears throat> what we're looking at is the power steering box here. The right-hand drive one. Not a lot of people know how these actually work. Uh, how can I explain it? Let me see if I can clamp this in the vise. I'll be able to tell you a bit better. So here we have the beast in the vise. Your steering shaft goes on here, and your drop arm down here. This goes to your, uh, you know, your axles and bits and bobs. You know, your steering knuckles. Um, <clears throat> you've got two connections on the top here. One's a feed and one's, a, one's a, a return. The feed's usually the smallest one, the biggest one's the return. But how does it actually work? Because I don't think I've covered this. and It's kind of simple. Because this shaft here is on a worm. A worm. In here, you see. And it turns a quadrant on the top of here, right? On here, there's, there's, a, there's a shaft called a selector shaft. And it's got quadrant teeth on, teeth on. So the worm, as it turns, can turn that shaft around like that. Pretty simple. That, in turn, goes all the way through down to the bottom arm here and turns this. See? That's easy enough. But how, do the pow how does it power steer? It's kind of clever. This is called an Adwest lightweight. Um, and um, the, it is very similar to the non power steering, the manual power steering you find in the army trucks and things like this. But what's different is you'll observe there's a pipe on the outside here. So what happens? This is not just an ordinary worm, no siree. This is the actual valve. Bear this in mind. So when you turn, and there's resistance on the drop arm, like on your wheels, it will slightly open the valve, 
put pressure in either side of a big piston that's in here. There's a big piston, all right? And that's what this pipe's for. Because this is a valve block here, right? So why isn't the two pipes? Well, because it's internally pressurized inside. Clever, eh? So pressure from the inside pushes the ram this way, which in turn turns the selector shaft because that's got a quadrant on it as well. So there's actually two quadrants. There's one at the top here and there's one at the bottom. I'll put some drawings up and I'll show you and uh, you'll probably understand. But this pipe here goes to the back of the uh, piston and pushes it this way. So internal pressure pushes this way and this pipe pushes it this way. It's really simple. But the thing is, and the clever part about it is this, when you turn onto full lock, for example, and hold it there, you'll hear this growl, because there's nowhere for the fluid to go, if you see what I mean, so it's, it's really not good. They say, I think it's about three seconds maximum you should hold it. But if you're just turning your wheel to go around a roundabout, for example, uh, the, the, the power steering valve will open, but once the wheels don't have any resistance, this valve goes to its natural state again. It, it, like it, it's like on a flex, if you see what I mean. It's a little, sh what we call, probably call a shuttle valve. Um, and it allows fluid to go back to the reservoir, even though it's on left or right turn. So it's not working all the time, if you see what I mean. Most of the time, damn thing's free running. Now, this is what you call your low pressure end, if you see what I mean. This is your low pressure end. So, so the seal on here is pathetically small. It's just a bloody uh, regular, or regular oil seal. But the one at the bottom, if you've done one of these before, down here, is a hydraulic seal because, as I said to you before, the body has pressure in it. And this is, this is the problem. Because usually the seal in the bottom, being a high pressure seal, and this turns only like quarter of a turn, or so, well, third of a turn, what it'll do is it'll gradually wear into that shaft and you'll see that some of the shafts aren't salvageable because you can't put a sleever on them. You can't really weld them up. You're not supposed to weld anything for steering. So that's out. Um, like I say, if you put a sleeve on, well, how are you going to get it in and out next time? Because it has to pass through some needle roller bearings, which is in here. And to add more injury, insult to injury, these are now, I don't think they're really obtainable new. So you have to get reconditioned ones. And I've had a hell of a lot of problems with reconditioned ones, I must admit. So that's why I <laughs> worked out a way to do them myself. Now, we had one once. I'm just looking for something to point with. Just hang on. Back again. Let's get pointing. Now, I want to show you here this, this valve. I've just buffed it up a bit. We're going to go a really deep zoom onto that if we can. There. Will it focus? Will it focus? No. There, perhaps there's a bit better. That's a job focusing this old camera now. You can see here, there's a distinct difference between the, this inside piece and this outside piece. This is actually the shaft. This is part of the valve. Because if you turn this, you'll see here, there is a pin. And we had one once. We, th we thought it was leaking here, a reconditioned one. It was dripping down. But it wasn't. We, we, we started the car with the shaft off and you could see it was dripping from between here. Now that meant that you were supposed to buy... Uh, it was a reconditioned one, so we got our money back. But the thing was, we were supposed to um, buy this whole shaft assembly, this screw. Absolute fortune. I think it was about 700 quid they wanted for it. Anyway, to cut a long story short, went down to JP, who's an hydraulic expert, and got loads and loads of bits and pieces. I said, we knew how this worked, you know, it was like a, it's like a shaft within the shaft, so it only turns a little bit to open a port. So we managed on his press to press this pin out, and it is a bugger to get out. After that, we pulled it out, and all it was was a little o-ring, like, like a square section o-ring inside here. That's all it was. Put it back together again, worked fine. So, let's do this rambling. Let's have a look if we can get this seal off. The reason why I know it's this seal that's leaking and not the bottom one is that when the car was running, there was oil 
on the top of the shaft here, on the top of the casing. Well, if you think about it logically, how the hell could oil get up there? It has to come from the top, but by careful observation you could see it was running down the back on top of the chassis, over the chassis and down here. Hell, you've seen it all before because it's like a weekly occurrence of these things. Let's see if we can get this to cover off. Again, little screwdriver, perhaps a dismantling tool if you've got one, you should get one by now. In fact, they're sold out. <laughs> They'll be back in the shop shortly. Now, add west, as far as I know, yeah, you look at the oil pouring out of it. Add west, as far as I know, there are three different types of seals on these. Three different types. Yeah, you can see it just, just plodding out. This is a dust shield. Yeah. So the dust shield has kept the oil in. Now, what can we observe here? Well, I don't know. Let's have a look. I might have to take the camera off. I'll get some brake cleaner up. Now we'll it's clean cleaned out. up. You can see there is a circlip in there. So, we're going to take that out. Um, bit tricky to do on the car because those pinholes are kind of small. I hope I've got a pair of uh, circlip pliers to go in there. Now, this encourages me because I think this seal's been put in from this end. All right. Now there are some adwests on the market. The seal goes in the other way, which means stripping the box down. Let's see if we can get that circuit. Let's have out. a try. I found a pair of circuit pliers that will that will go through the hole. Kind of tricky. Only if there's some angles. Oh yeah, that is better. Let me use them, mate. I don't know if you can see with the zoom because I can't watch the camera and watch this at the same time. Bloody hell, that's one. There's no pins in there. I don't think you want to go in there. Oh, oh there's one. I think I've, I've, jumped the, I've jumped the ring a bit, so I'm going to pair a little screwdriver and see if we can just get under it and flick it out. Could you do this on the car? <laughs> Best of luck. Best of luck. Come on. Come out or else. Just tease it out. There we go. There we go. Well, hopefully we haven't damaged the shaft because the actual seal surface is on the inside. The next problem is how do we get the seal out? And first of all, have we got one? Well, it looks like I've got a seal. This is the chap. Now I want to show you something interesting. I've got another kit here that I've partially opened. These are the ones I use. Um, they used to be called... Oh, I used to call these seals. Kotoko, Kotoko. They're made in Germany now. Um, but I have used the Brit Park ones, the aftermarket ones. Uh, I've got one. Um, no, I don't think I've got one. Oh, wait a minute, yes I have. Here's one here. They're not very good. And I'll tell you for the reason why. I don't want to open it up. But it's all to do with the locking nut that goes on the top of. Oops, sorry. Oh, are you alright? <laughs> A Joe Biden moment there. The locking nut that goes on here, it's a special nut and I can show you one because it's uh, it's a, it's a different it's a game changer for leaks. Because remember what I said, it's under pressure inside that container. That's what they supply in the cortico or this type of Fuden Fudenberg kit. It's twice as much but it's got better sales. But you can see there, there's an ingrained seal inside the nut. Now, what the, what the supply from Brit Park? Well, just get, let me go and I get one. Get In the Brit Park kits, it's just a regular nylon nut. This is about as much good as a glass eye. If we uh, where did I put that nut? If we look at the original nut, you'll see why. You remember when I said it had a piece of nylon seal at the bottom? He said, well, why don't you just put a copper washer on it, Mike, or something like that? 
the top cover here is concaved, it's got a hollow in it to accept, not that no, this one, <laughs> another Joe Biden moment. Um, yeah, so it's worth paying the extra. Less of this rambling, how am I going to get the seal out? Well, there's the seal and there's a the drill. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drill very precisely through the seal, both sides, and put a self-tapping screw in, and we're going to pull it out. <laughs> You're joking, Mike, it'll never work. <laughs> let's have a go. Now, I might have to stand in front of the camera for this one, but let's see. That bloody drill, drill's as bent as a nine-bob bit. Can I get it in for the shower? I'm going to have to really... I'm going to have to really get on to the end of this. Of course the battery is flat.